Hello everyone, this is William's Guide to Mathematics, where we have Mathematics Lessons. Today will not be any day different, as we'll be taking a look at the topic Macro and Function. Now, before I let you into the objective of this lesson, what we'll be taking a look at, let me take you back to what we learned back in nursery school, primary school. Remember we have something like A, if you have something like A, B, C, D, and you have something like apple, maybe um, cat, um, ball, and dog, I can link A to apple, I can link B to ball, I can link C to cat, and even D to dog. What we call it there is actually matching. We are looking at something very close to that now, and that is what we call mapping. Now, what do we call mapping or how do we arrive at mapping and matching? Now, when you take a look at the pairing I've just done, A for Apple. Now, the question is why is A for Apple? It is so because in this matching, we are considering the first letter, the first letter of each word. A starts for Apple, B starts for Ball, C starts for Cat and D starts for dog. Also, I can have another situation. Look at this case. We have Abuja, we have Brasilia, we have London, and we have Washington DC. Then in another one, I have Nigeria, I have Brazil, I have England, and I have USA. Now, I can link Abuja to Nigeria, I can link Brasilia to Brazil, I can link London to England, and I can link Washington DC to USA. The question is, what is the reason behind this linking of this? I've just considered the capital of each country. Now, the bottom line is that anytime we talk about mapping, we talk about a reason for linking these things together. Before I give you the definition of mapping, let me give you a breakdown of our lesson objective for today. First, at the end of this lesson, we should be able to define mapping. We should also be able to what? Define functions. Then, we should be able to know when a mapping is a mapping or not. And finally, we should be able to know the types of mappings we have. Let's come back to the definition of a mapping. Like I talked about the capitals and their countries, I just told you that the capitals and their country, there's a, there's a reason for linking them together, which is because one is the capital of the other country. So a mapping is a rule which assigns an element X, element of P, to another element Y, element of Q. Let me go back to the capital and the countries. The capital in that case is representing my P, Why the Q is representing the countries. So I'm assigning each capital to a country. I'm linking from one capital like Abuja to Nigeria, like um, Brasilia to Brazil, like um, London to England and Washington DC to what? To USA. So in mapping, we always talk about a rule. Remember earlier I said A for apple, B for ball. There we are considering the first letter. I can decide to say E for apple, L for ball, T for cat, and G for dog. In that case, I'm considering what? The last letter. So for every mapping, there's always a reason for assigning something to the other. Now, let me stick with the capitals and the countries. Now, the capital, like I said, is P. Why the countries is what is Q. Now we call P our domain, so we link from the domain to the other one, and the other one is called the co-domain. So meaning that my P is the domain, my Q is the co-domain. So P will give me Q. So what is connecting P and Q is called the mapping. Now let me take a very good look at something, something. Better. Take a look at this diagram where I have under P 
I have element W, X, Y, Z. And under Q, I have A, B, F, A, G. Now, my W is being linked with B. Y, my X is being linked with G. My Y is being linked with A. And my Z is being linked with B. Now, I can say that my P is the domain. My Q is the co-domain. You can see F on it. F is representing the mapping. So that's the mapping F. The mapping F. Now, if you look at the element in the co-domain, I mean under Q, where we have A, B, F, E, G. We call them the image. Just like you stand in front of the mirror and what you see, the result is the image. So the result from the domain, which is P in this case, is Q, the element on that Q. So we can call A, B, E, F, G as our image. Aside from that, if you look at the diagram very well, we only use A, B, and G. We did not use F and E. So we refer to A, B, and G that is used in the code domain as the range. We refer to A, B, G as the range. So at times you can be asked what is the range of the mapping. The range is the used, they are the used images. Let us define function. A function is a mapping whose domain and codomain are sets of numbers. A function is a mapping whose codomain and domain are set of numbers. Take a look at this function f of x equals 2x plus 1. Now, if I'm required to get f of 2, that simply means that I will substitute 2 for x. So I will have 2 into bracket 2 plus 1, and that will give me 5. Similarly, if I'm to do for 3, I will have 2 into bracket 3 plus 1. That is 6 plus 1, which is 7. That is my f of 3. If I'm to do for f of 4, that will be 2 into bracket 4 plus 1. That is 9. And if I'm to do for 6, I will have 2 into bracket 6 plus 1 is equal to what? 13. Now, if I put all the values of my x in one of these, which is my domain, that is 2, 3, 4, 6, and in the other one, I put all the values I got from my f of x, that is 5, 7, 9, and 13. I can link my 2 to 5 because f of 2 gave me 5, f of 3 gave me what? 7, f of 4 is 9 and f of 6 is 13. Now what I have here is a function because all I have in this mapping is a set of numbers. So whenever we have a mapping where the codomain and the domain is a set of numbers, we can take that to be a function. Now let us take a look at how to determine a mapping, how to identify a mapping. Now, for which we have a mapping, all the elements in the domain must have a corresponding image in the codomain. What I'm saying is that every element on the domain, the domain is always on the left, the codomain is always on the right. So every element on the domain, inside the domain, must be assigned to an element in the what? in the code domain and we can have an element in the we can have two elements in the domain sharing the same code domain for example i can have two students in the same class the student represents the domain the class is the code domain that is the, the result the image where you place them so i can have two students in a class but can I, I cannot have a student in two classes a student cannot be in GSS3 and at the same time be in SS1. But I can have two students be in GSS3, for example. I can have five students be in SS1. So we can have as many domains sharing the same code domain, the same image in the code domain. But we cannot have one element in the domain having two different images in the code domain. And that is why we say that the domain must have the element in the domain must have a unique image, that is, the image must be different. Let's take a look at the mapping F. In the domain, we have PQR, and in the codomain, we have EFG. 
P is assigned, R is assigned, but Q is not assigned. Remember I said every element in the domain must be assigned to an element in the codomain. Because the element Q is not assigned, I can tell you that F is not a mapping. Let's take a look at this second illustration. We have UVW in our domain. Fine, UVW, they are all assigned to an element at least in the codomain. But there's a problem here. The problem is with V. V is assigned to two elements in the codomain. Remember, I told you that the student cannot be in two classes at the same time. You can only have a student in one class. So, for that reason, G is not a mapping because the element V does not have a unique image in the co-domain. Let's look at one more, H. If you look at all the elements in the domain, they are all assigned. And all the elements in the co-domain, find not every element there is assigned. You can, you can see the last element C, it is not assigned. But that is not a problem. We can have a class with no students. But the students must have a class. So all the elements in the domain, they are all assigned. And no element in the domain is assigned twice to elements in the code domain. So we can definitely say that H is a mapping. Again, F is not a mapping because Q is not assigned. G is not a mapping because V is assigned twice. But H is a mapping because all the elements in the domain, they are assigned to a unique image in the code domain. Now we take a look at the types of mapping that we have. We have four types of mapping. We have one-on-one -on -one mapping, we have onto mapping, we have identity mapping, and we have constant mapping. A look at each of these four. A one-on-one -on -one mapping is a type of mapping where different elements in the domain has different image in the codomain. Say for example, look at this mapping. Minus one is linked to two. One is linked to two. Also, minus one and one, they are not having different image. The same thing for two. Two, they are linked to five. So we cannot take this to be a one-to-one -one mapping. We can't take this to be a one-to-one -one mapping. Let's look at another case where we have this diagram. You can see that every element in the domain have it has its own image. You don't have an image being shared by two domain, element, two elements from the domain. So we can take this mapping F2 to be a one to one mapping and onto mapping is a mapping where we have every element of the code domain as an image of at least one element in the domain that is we use all the elements in the code domain look at this mapping f3 when you look at the mapping f3 i'm going to the code domain now where i have efg under q all efg have been assigned to something from the domain so i can say f3 is a what is an onto mapping look at mapping f4 look at the code domain there where we have xyz z is not being assigned so we can't take this to be an onto mapping again an onto mapping we use all the elements in the code domain the third type of mapping is identity mapping from the word identity you can be able to identify the domain with the codomain. And the reason for this is because both the domain and the codomain, they are the same. Take a look at the mapping F5. You have gamma representing linked to gamma, alpha is linked to alpha, and beta is linked to beta. So it means that in this mapping, the domain and the codomain are more or less the same thing. And that's why we call it identity mapping. The last type of mapping we have is called a constant mapping. In a constant mapping, we have all the elements linked to just one element in the code domain. And that is why it is constant. It is constant because whatever you 
put in as the domain, you get the same thing in the co-domain. So we say all the elements in the domain are assigned to one element in the co-domain. Remember what I told you about range? Range of a mapping is what we use in the co-domain. So that means that the range of a constant mapping is always one element. One element will be the range of a constant mapping. Look at this mapping F6. You see gamma is assigned to beta, alpha is assigned to beta, and beta is also assigned to what? Beta. So we only use one element in the what? In the co-domain. So far so good we've come to the end of the lesson mapping and function. We've been able to define mapping, we also define function, then we, we talked about how to determine a mapping, how to know whether a mapping is or not. And finally we talked about the four types of mapping. I believe we've enjoyed the lesson.